Recently, I had a chance to discuss Europe's mega region trend with Vincent Goodstad. He is head of European relations for the Metrics Network of European Metropolitan Regions. Goodstad is an advisor to a range of international bodies, and he shared his approaches to planning on the city, region, and mega regional level. How and when did mega regions first emerge, and why is the history important? Well, they emerged essentially in Western Europe in that very densely populated part of southern England and the low countries of the Netherlands and Belgium. And it was found critically important, particularly in the Netherlands, where they were very short of land, that they planned together. So the cities of Amsterdam, Rotterdam and the other cities of the Netherlands got together and produced a plan called the Randstad, which it sets out a vision for how that area should be developed, urbanised, but retain a green heart to it. Uh, in the s south of England, there were equally regional strategies for how London should be managed and how it should expand. At a time when London was actually one of the, if not the world's leading city, and it grew from that, and it has emerged that as urbanisation now has hit other places, they realise that it's no point just planning cities individually, but have to plan them in the relationship to the adjoining towns and adjoining cities because of the sprawl and mm. interdependence. Can you point to anyone mm. that you think is doing it really well? Well, the one I mentioned, which is the Randstad, has, is the one that most people look to as to how you should get that cooperation. And they've just revised their plan. It's an ongoing, continuous process that's been going on now probably for 40 or 50 years. I think that other areas are emerging, particularly in places like Germany, where in fact the federal government has encouraged cities to work together in a multi-city complex so that they actually, and for example in, in Stuttgart, have a larger region which is planning the, the green infrastructure, the way they manage their environment, investing in public transport and promoting economic development. Although Stuttgart is one of the leading hubs of the European economy with its car industry base, mm -hmm. they know that they have to refresh the way they approach their development and encourage industry to stay and grow in their area. So th these are areas that are, are very successful. In England, there is a movement now to develop these as well, these uh, larger complexes, the Northern Way, which plans for the six cities of Liverpool, Manchester, Sheffield, uh, and Newcastle to work together in developing fast rail links between them to market themselves separately together and to promote the protection of the environment. How do you foster a conversation such as we might hear in the Piedmont Atlantic uh, mega region mm. when there's so much infighting over things like water or who's going to get the next automaker? Mm. I think people actually ha uh, have to understand that they have a shared future. They have shared problems and the solution to those problems is not by fighting between themselves, but by working together because the competition is actually global now. And the way that people find most useful is to start with some very practical, commonly shared objective. For example, developing a fast rail link, or it might be developing a, a regional park, or it might be developing some economic um, productive resource, for example, um, a, a major conference and exhibition centre that serves the whole region. Or in the case of Lithuania, where there is a, the fast rail link being developed up through to the, that, that part of Europe, uh, the Vilnius, which is not is being bypassed, is working with Kaunas to, to take advantage of the fast rail link uh, rather than argue about where the fast rail link should go. You've made a point uh, repeatedly that this really is a bottom-up approach and that local control is, is critical and key and really the root of how a mega region should move forward. I think the, there has to be this buy-in locally. People have to accept that the future of local communities is increasingly dependent upon decisions taken outside. And if the implementation is to take place effectively, then local communities have to uh, accept okay. the decisions taken. That is not to say that there aren't going to, there isn't going to be a need for a major input from state or federal government in those decision makings. Yes, there are, because also the advantage of taking this mega regional approach is actually in promoting what we would say in the United Kingdom, UK PLC, that in fact the future of the United Kingdom depends upon the competitiveness of its mega regions. And I think that is the, the idea that people are realizing that the future of nations 
-hmm. It's dependent upon how, how effective their metropolitan areas are and how they work together. So central government also needs to be party to the process. But if it was to be top-down imposed, mm -hmm. you would not get the, the acceptance and the understanding of why it's needed. It has to be yeah. from the bottom up, especially in terms of fine grain and fine detail and the way things are put together. If you were going to give advice to those um, that are trying to push forward with the mega region of uh, planning, uh, what advice would you give them as they speak to our federal government in terms of what they think that the federal government could be doing or should be doing to promote this in a positive way? The key question that I always ask in, this, in response mm -hmm. to that situation uh, dealing with national or federal government is to say the federal government itself has m stated some very high order objectives about building a competitive economy, mm -hmm. building a secure environment, building a harmonious society. And I asked them the question, how can they achieve those high order ideals if in fact our cities aren't working properly? And I think okay. the answer is a no brainer, as we would call it. It's self-evident that actually it's in the interest of the objectives that the government has set itself, that it supports initiatives taken locally by metropolitan areas to work effectively together. This is certainly the way it is seen in Europe, certainly the way the federal government of, Europe, uh, of Germany have done it, the way mm. the French are seeking to do it. We each do it differently because of our own cultural, political context. But that's at the heart of the way we're approaching it in Europe. And you would say that a variety of people need to be at the table based on that, that you have to have it from the bottom to the top. Yes, no one should be excluded. It needs to be an inclusive mm. process from the start. It also, though, needs to be structured because it is complex. I think you'd even made the comment that everybody going in needs to understand exactly what is expected of them and what their role is. That's right. And there are some who actually are going to be the implementers of the strategies, uh, the major agencies, mm -hmm. whether it's transit or environmental agency or federal government. And they, therefore, have to become not just consultees in the process, mm -hmm. but partners in the formulation of the, of the process. They have to sign on at the bottom line mm -hmm. to what comes out of the local initiative. And in Europe, um, that is done particularly well in France, where in fact there is what's called a contract de ville or contract de cahier, where in fact once the strategy is produced, there's a seven year, not legally binding commitment, but understanding mm -hmm. of who will contribute what in terms of financial resources to delivering the strategy. And so we have this joining up of local and national government in a sense, at the heart of the mega regional debate, as I said, is for it's saying to local people: by working together, you have the clout, you have the, you have the capacity scale to enter into an engaging discussion with the big players: central government, corporate entities, national agencies. I know that you've also said that if you're going to be successful as a mega region going forward at this point in time, you have to address climate change. Yes, you cannot avoid it. Mm. Yes. So what advice would you give local leaders when it comes to addressing climate change as we move forward? Well, in terms of climate change, I think we're all learning. The first thing we have to learn is that climate change is no longer an issue about long-term environmental safeguards. It's a short-term economic imperative that we need to face, that our economies are dependent upon fixing our cities, our nations, our economies, so that we reduce our carbon footprint and therefore and doing that the planning process lies at the heart of the solutions it's about the the way we plan our cities the, the densities the forms of transit the way we have more mixed-use development and just generally without effective local plans we will not tackle the global the global challenge that exists and in the West that's Europe and America, we have to take ownership of the fact that we are the biggest threat to climate change in just the sheer scales of consumption and the styles and patterns of, of behavior and consumption that we have. So, okay. What are the benefits to becoming yeah. and thinking like a mega region? The benefits that I have found in planning at a larger scale are that it empowers local communities. By working together, they actually are able to engage more effectively with national government corporate players. It actually, you end up with joint government, you get more efficient use of resources, 
you also have a greater clarity of vision and more chance of success.